In this short video, we'll be talking about the HPT axis or the hypothalamus pituitary thyroid axis. This is a neuroendocrine control system which modulates our body's response towards metabolism and stress. Obviously, this axis includes the hypothalamus, pituitary and the thyroid gland. So from the hypothalamus, TRH hormone gets secreted and secreted into the hypophysial uh, portal system. Ultimately, it leads to the release of TSH hormone from the pituitary. The thyroid stimulating hormone acts on the thyroid gland and, let, and leads to the release of T3 and T4. Then the T3 and T4 level can rise in the blood. When it goes beyond the level, it leads to a negative feedback into the pituitary and at the level of hypothalamus. So this is the entire axis. But let us try to understand why this is at all important, why this kind of negative feedback and modulation is important. Thyroid gland and thyroid hormones are implicated in several biological processes. First of all, they regulate metabolism. They regulate blood cell production. Thyroid control metabolism of protein, carbohydrate and fats. Almost all aspects of metabolism is modulated by thyroid hormones. Overall electrolyte balance and electrolyte uh, absorbance is also mediated and modulated by thyroid hormones. Lastly, thyroid gland can also secrete hormones such as uh, thyrocalcitonin which regulates blood calcium level. So already you can see there are so many physiological roles that this gland plays. So obviously the output of these gland has to be regulated very precisely. And this tuning is really important because when this tuning goes off, there are conditions like hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism. So too much is bad, too little is bad. And each of these conditions lead to several problems. So let us try to understand how this regulation happens. So in the hypothalamus, there are specific cell types. So there are parvonuclear neurons in the paraventricular nucleus of the hypothalamus, which secretes the TRH. Overall, the TRH gets secreted into the portal system and reach the anti anterior pituitary. In the anterior pituitary, there are so many different type of cells like thyrotrops, corticotrops, somatotrops, lactotrops, gonadotrops, and many more. But the thyrotrops are the key cell on which the TRH hormone works. And this is the cell type that produces TSH. So TRH stimulates the production of TSH from the anterior pituitary. Okay, once TSH is produced, it would bind to the TSH receptors on the thyroid follicular cells. So it gets secreted into the blood and reach the thyroid gland. Thy uh, the TSH hormone is a glycoprotein with two subunits, alpha and beta. For simplicity, they are shown as dots. Anyway, what really happens when TSH binds to the TSH receptor? Many things happen. One of the most important event is upregulation of the iodine transporter. It allows a lot of iodine to get inside the thyroid follicle and reach the colloid. Eventually, this iodine would be the iodine ion would be converted into the molecular form with the help of thyroperoxidase enzyme. Meanwhile, there are specific thyroglobulin proteins which are getting synthesized in the ER. Eventually, they would move through the Golgi and eventually get secreted into the colloid. And this is the substrate for thyroid hormone production. So the thyroperoxidase made iodine and this iodination would take place in this thyroglobulin molecule. There could be monoiodotyrosine, diiodotyrosine, there could be even combination of these which is creating triiodothyronine and uh, thyroxine, the T4. So all this thing is happening inside the thyroid uh, follicle. After that, these hormones would be uh, taken back by pinocytosis by the thyroid follicular cell. Eventually, these hormones would be released and secreted into the bloodstream. In the bloodstream, there are several carriers which can take these hormones in their place. But now we understand how the thyroid follicle or as a thyroid gland, how it is producing the TSH, the, the uh, thyroid hormones, the T3 and the T4. Now, this particular axis has to be regulated because there could be ne negative feedback on pituitary and hypothalamus. If everything goes okay, then this situation is known as 
euthyroidism that means a normal functioning of this particular axis so there is proper negative feedback all the level of t3 and t4 is in a balanced fashion so it's not too much or not too little but things can go wrong anytime such as in primary hypothyroidism in that case what happens is low level of thyroid hormone gets secreted so, and this particular regulatory feedback loop is hindered why because there could be let's say thyroid surgery that reduce the thyroid glands ability to produce thyroid hormones also there could be autoimmune thyroiditis like hashimotos also there could be secondary hypothyroidism there could be a feedback error from the pituitary let's say pituitary is not secreting enough tsh that could be also another possibility and it happens in anterior pituitary failure or in many case of tu uh, tumors in the pituitary gland there could be the other uh, situation as well like primary hyperthyroidism and secondary hyperthyroidism in both these cases too much of thyroid hormones are produced maybe let's say in a primary hyperthyroidism like in graves disease there are too much of t3 and t4 in the blood which lead to several problems also in secondary hypothyroidism what happens is um, there are tumors in the pituitary so it leads to too much production of the tsh that leads to a uh, lot of thyroid hormone production from the gland but all these things lead to hyperthyroidism and associated problems so overall this kind of clinical situation tells us a precise balance of thyroid hormone in the blood is really essential for our body's normal physiology so i hope this was useful if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe you can uh, you can support our channel via super thanks see you in next video